Well, good morning. Uh, we had a technical difficulty this morning, which means, of course, that I couldn't actually find my phone. Uh, naturally, it was where I left it. Uh, surprise, surprise, but that wasn't where I thought it was. So, uh, sorry about the late start, folks. I see we've got some people online. We'll get started now. This Easter Wednesday, the... Uh, it's like the 7th of April to 2021 as we continue our celebration of the resurrection in the octave or week that follows Easter. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's First John, the first chapter let us therefore humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved for this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Today we're going to use one of the uh, uh, triad of Easter Psalms 2, 57, and 111. And we start with Psalm 2 on page uh, 345. And Psalm 2, uh, you may recall, is, is uh, 
uh, a key psalm, uh, uh, a messianic psalm. It's a psalm about the kingdom of God and of his anointed one, the Messiah or Christ, how it is challenged by the kings of the earth and how it is um, victorious over them and has obvious applications to the Easter triumph of Jesus Christ. Why do the heathen so furiously rage together? And why do the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth stand up, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bonds asunder, and cast away their cords from us. He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh them to scorn. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will rehearse the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Desire of me, and I shall give thee the nations for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt bruise them with a rod of iron, and break them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye that are judges of the earth. Serve the Lord in fear, and rejoice unto him with reverence. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and so ye perish from the right way. If his wrath be kindled, yea, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now, Psalm 4, uh, 57, on page 409 which speaks about the same uh, conflict and victory from a slightly different perspective. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee, and under the shadow of thy wings shall be my refuge, until this tyranny be overpassed. I will call unto the Most High God, even unto the God that shall perform the cause that I have in hand. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproof of him that would eat me up. God shall send forth his mercy and truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among the children of men that are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Set up thyself, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, and pressed down my soul. They have digged a pit before me, and are fallen into the midst of it themselves. My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up my glory, awake lute and harp. I myself will awake right early. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the peoples, and I will sing unto thee among the nations. For the greatness of thy mercy reacheth unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Set up thyself, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now, Psalm 111, thanksgiving uh, for the works of God, his works especially of redemption. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, secretly among the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is worthy to be praised and had an honor, and his righteousness endureth forever. The merciful and gracious Lord hath so done his marvelous works that they ought to be had in remembrance. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed this people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are true. They stand fast for ever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all they that do thereafter. His praise endureth for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 61st chapter of Psalm 
There we go. Sorry, we had a little connection issue, um, and I may have lost you in the last psalm. We're at chapter 61 of the book of the prophet Isaiah, passage which uh, we associate more typically with Advent or Christmas or Epiphany. But here it has a special resonance. It's a prophecy of the Messiah, the one anointed by God to proclaim the good news of our uh, deliverance um, uh, and uh, uh, by which a fallen people are raised up to the service of God. And so this speaks very much to the condition of the disciples um, who have failed their Lord so conspicuously, who are raised up and restored to fellowship in his mission and now uh, charged with mission to all the world. And what's true of the disciples, of course, is all the more true of all Christians uh, as well. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. And now the voices switch, and I think we hear the voice of the church. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Here endeth the first lesson. Well, let's let our own praise spring forth uh, in the words of the Te Deum on page 10. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, bless thine heritage, govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, 
have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, so our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 21st chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Now this chapter is a kind of an epilogue or appendix to uh, John's Gospel, uh, but not to be dismissed for that reason. It's actually rather profound and wonderful. Uh, and in it, we find the disciples, a number of the disciples, back in Galilee, back in their old trade of fishing uh, for fish in the Sea of Galilee, back in the context of their original calling and ministry. And you might think, what does this mean after the resurrection? That, that, that That's where they are. And I think there's two things to think of. The first is, um, uh, it's there's a number of hints, this is one of them, that the journey of the disciples from the crisis of Good Friday to the assurance of Easter faith was probably not a straight line progression. It is something that happened, had to happen more than once. And we certainly know that the Lord appeared more than once to his disciples. And here's here's one of those accounts. Um, uh, as there a greater clarity of uh, vision and uh, a stronger assurance of faith develop. And the other side of it is simply this, that the disciples, of course, in many respects, had, um, you know, their initial hope and promise of their ministry had been, of course, come to a crashing end on Good Friday. Um, and uh, so this story is about how the love of God in Christ continues for them. And in the context of the, the original calling, uh, as we read about in the miraculous draft of fishes in Luke 5, this calling is renewed, and most specifically to the one who had most conspicuously failed, and that's Simon Peter, whose threefold denial is now overcome. Well, that's a lot of comment, but um, just want to alert you to the uh, some of the issues that are present in this wonderful account. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a-fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. This, of course, is a, quite an echo of Simon Peter's original call, and is recounted in Luke 5. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. And that's, of course, again from the first calling, occasion of the first calling in Luke 5. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. The word used for fire of coals is rather unusual. It's only used in one other place, and that's the fire in the courtyard where Simon Peter uh, denied his Lord. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And yet all there was, and for all there was so many, yet was the not, not the net broken. In the original when the nets were breaking, the net is unbroken now in this resurrection uh, event. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, 
who had denied him three times. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. Here endeth the second lesson. Well, a wonderful lesson here in which Jesus, in, in a very loving way, nonetheless confronts Peter with the truth of his failure uh, in a non-judgmental, non-harsh way, and offers Simon to Peter that opportunity to make a kind of reparation, um, to be restored to fellowship uh, in the mission of feeding the flock of Christ. And it's because Peter himself has had to acknowledge his own failure uh, and yet still uh, experience this grace and love unchanged, undiminished from Jesus, that he's able to go to others. And specifically, we see him in action in the city of Jerusalem, uh, confronting the people of Jerusalem and even their leaders with their share of responsibility in the condemnation and death of Jesus and yet offering them on, on, on the same basis that he's received it, uh, the grace and love of God in forgiveness of sins. It's only as we have known our own failing and our own restoration by his grace that we are able to extend that to others. And so we give thanks and praise to our risen Lord. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray, uh, united uh, in confessing one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of us all. Let us commend ourselves and one another and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. Bid your prayers for our country, its peace, order, and good government. 
for our churches and the faithfulness of their worship and witness. For those who suffer in mind, body, and estate, and I, we pause to bring to mind those individuals for whom we've been asked to pray. And uh, we remember from our God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who through thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, hast overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life, we humbly beseech thee that, as by thy special grace preventing us, Thou dost put into our minds good desires, so by thy continual help we may bring the same to good effect. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we give thanks for the steadfast loving kindness of Christ, which continues through our own failures uh, and uh, is always calling us to repentance and restoring us to fellowship with him in his mission, um, let us give thanks for these uh, wonderful graces, uh, as we say together the general thanksgiving on page 19. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, and we beseech thee to grant us, here we go, my memory is failing me, and we beseech thee, uh, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we shall forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. I'm sorry, we had a bunch of disruptions here. Uh, today's service and uh, Otis will be back in a smoother groove tomorrow as we depart a uh, verse from chapter 21. Uh, is, uh, I think, uh, the, the one we need to keep in mind. Um, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. 
Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in it in his peace. Amen.